Hey guys, I'm talking about um, ouch, the Holy Spirit this week, a lot about the Holy Spirit, and you could go on forever about the Holy Spirit, but I want to start today about self-control. Uh, who doesn't have issues, who hasn't had issues with self-control? I certainly have. Um, I've written a book about it, How to Let Go of Your Food and Weight Obsession, A Guide for the Woman Who Wants More for Her Life. I'm in recovery from multiple addictions. I certainly understand what it means to not have self-control. And I don't know about you, but I spent a really long time trying to fix my self-control issues myself and got really frustrated and thankfully came to the end of myself. And I pray if you are trying to figure it out that you do come to the end of yourself, that you realize that you need a power greater than yourself. That's what 12 step is all based on, how you need a higher power. For me, that is God. For you, I pray that is God or you are seeking God because that is who is really going to give you that self-control. And I'm going to tell you about it from, we're going to read from Galatians 5. And it talks about living by the Spirit's power. And it's important because I want you to hear what is the, the, the flesh? Like you are driven, if you are not driven by the spirit, you are driven by the flesh. So if you're driven by the flesh, how could you possibly have self-control? So let me just read um, in chapter five, verse 19. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature and some, some, some um, Bible versions say flesh, says the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hmm, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Interesting. Next verse. Well, it started at envy, but let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living this sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. And I don't expect you, if you are um, seeking the, just starting to seek the Lord to understand what the kingdom of God all, is all about, but pretty much it's big. But it also means you're going to heaven because you are a child of God because you have returned to God. And, um, you know, these are all pretty big things that you have to look at if they are prevalent in your life. And if they are, you know, you are being driven by your flesh and you need to kill the flesh. <laughs> you need to, no, I'm not saying kill yourself. Nope. I am saying, you know, there's a reason that the, you know, multiple times in the Bible, Jesus says, you know, um, you have to take up your cross and follow me. You have to give up yourself and follow me, which, you know, the enemy wants us to only focus on ourself. And it's, Kind of why we have to break free of that. Because think about when you're fo trying to fix yourself, and you're basing it on willpower, you know, you're not trusting God. You're trusting yourself. And no wonder you get frustrated because you there is an end to you. So, um, interesting, in verse 16, it says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, and you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. And the spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. So when you are saved, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses because you are led by the spirit. So... Here's the thing. Um, we are in a spiritual war today, um, whether it's, you know, a, a, across the globe or within ourselves, there is a complete spiritual war. And you can see if you study this, you can see the difference between the flesh and the spirit. And, you know, it's it's becoming easily um, discernible if you have the spirit. But um, so let me read what it is to have the fruit of the spirit. And what includes the fruit of the Spirit? Verse 22, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. So, and here's my favorite part in the next verse. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. 
Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. You are a child of God. If you have chosen to follow Christ, you are a child of God. You can see when you meet people that have the fruit of the Spirit in their lives. It's it's just different. So if you have issues with self-control, I think you need to get past yourself and you think you need to get back to God because you are not going to figure it out yourself. You're just not. So I'm going to pray that you hit the place where you realize you can't. You know why? Because he can. That's it for today. Make sure you follow me at Mentor Mama Mare. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you want to be mentored by me personally, I'll put the email in the YouTube video and... I'm starting a course in January that is all about this stuff. I'm all about helping you guys grow deeper with God. So um, I will see you tomorrow. Sorry about my meowing kitty.